Our bones and bodies could not exist without it. Neither could plants or microbes. Carbon is the cornerstone of life on Earth. More than a trillion tons of it exist on the surface. But much more is buried deep underground. Well, carbon's an element, which is an extremely common element on Earth. And it's the element which is uh, the basis for all life. Uh, you and me and everybody uh, are made uh, mostly of carbon and water. In order to make natural gas, the organic carbon needs to cook in the oven of Mother Earth. The surroundings need to be right, and the stew needs to be buried deep, deep underground for a long period of time. If you have a, an ocean or a sea, in the water there are plants and animals. Usually they're very small. It's normally what we call plankton. Those things that are swimming out around in the sea, which are too small for us to actually see, when they die, uh, thousands upon thousands of them rain down onto the, the floor of the ocean. And as more and more sediment falls down from the ocean, it buries this material, and slowly they become uh, chemically changed. They start to turn into oil or gas. The search for natural gas is arduous work. It takes persistence. When geologists drill down into the ocean floor, they are looking for this. Clean, fine sand without sludge. The cleanness of the sand without silt deposits and mud indicates that a reservoir can contain mobile gas trapped in the pores. This makes us extremely optimistic. A thousand meters above us, on a drilling ship floating on hostile seas, geologists were now examining samples from a layer of sandstone. With such explorations often ending in failure, they were prepared for disappointment. But as the results came down the line, they realized that they had succeeded in discovering a vast new reservoir of natural gas, 170 million years in the making. Five years of work went in before the first underwater installations went into place. The industry had no experience of producing natural gas from deep water in such a harsh environment. Norway has managed well for a century on domestically generated hydropower and has no need for the gas. We're a thousand miles from anybody. Who would be the customer? Who would buy the gas? Would it be a commercially successful venture? We'll come back to all that. Groundbreaking work was required, with developers using unmanned modules and building equipment, placing the platform on the ocean floor. With a projected daily output of 70 million cubic meters, Orman Langer will make Norway the world's second largest gas exporter after Russia. The temperature at the seafloor can be as low as minus 1.2 degrees Celsius. This poses the risk that hydrates, a form of hydrocarbon ice, may form in the unprocessed gas as it flows through the pipes, causing blockages which halt production. To combat this, a glycol-based liquid is injected into the gas as it comes up from the well. The antifreeze is separated out again on land and returned to the system. The unprocessed well stream, consisting of gas and condensate, gets routed through two multi-phase pipelines. Now, these pipes have been laid through unusually rugged terrain. It took persistence, tremendous resources, and a series of technological triumphs to overcome the challenges posed by the field. But 10 years and billions of dollars later, the gas is ready to be processed here at Nihamna. We're now going to tell you about the journey of the gas to this celebrated Neomna gas plant. And this is what we call the landfall. This is where the gas, condensate and make arrive in these two 30-inch pipelines. The journey of the gas has been a very turbulent one to this point. And when it hits the slug catchers back here, we separate the gas from the liquids. The gas continues its journey while the liquid flow down these pipes settling at the end. The condensate on the top and the meg water at the bottom. The gas, however, continues its journey to get dried. After customer specifications, 
we dry the gas to prevent clogging of the pipeline. And this is where the gas gets dried. But this we use tank. Tank has the qualities that it's ideal to absorb water in the gas. The hydrator column is filled with the packing that forces the gas in tank to meet, increasing the contact surface, drying the gas on the way to the top. The tank gets regenerated and used in the process again and again. Namnet mitt er Beina Drikstvor. Jeg er ordfører i Aukra kommune. Det er jo en gigantisk utbygging som har føregått. Og når vi nå er i driftfasen, så er vi overbevist i Aukra kommune om at dette samarbeidet vil være veldig bra. Nå er vi standing i en turbo-expander building. This is the place where we remove all the heavier hydrocarbon components. This turbine does two things. On that side, the turbine reduces the pressure, resulting in a temperature drop, causing the last heavier hydrocarbons to condensate in a separator. Now being at right customer specification, the gas enters the other side. On this side, the turbine increases the pressure and the gas keeps flowing to the export compressor. This is the final step before the gas leaves Nyamna. We just left the turbo expander, and now the gas is dry, clean, and ready to be sent through to the customers. This machine uses 45 megawatts of power, and so does the two others at the plant. This is the same amount as a small Norwegian city. Now it's just off to the metering, and then off to the customers at the end of the Langeled pipeline. Remember where the gas came in? Well, this is where the gas goes out. This is the 42-inch long lead pipeline, which takes the gas to the customers in the UK. The need to explore in frontier locations is pressing, as easy to access oil and gas is ever harder to find. Whatever the technological challenges thrown up, demand continues to grow. And at a time when concern over greenhouse gas emissions is rising, the newly discovered gas field in the Norwegian Sea, at 400 square kilometers, one of the world's largest offshore gas fields, offered the opportunity to develop huge reserves of the world's cleanest burning fossil fuel. The immediate customer for Ormenlange is the UK, 1,200 kilometers away. By 2010, the field will supply 20% of the country's gas. With North Sea gas fields aging, and energy needs rising, the UK sees a special significance in Ormenlange. But the Ormenlange pipeline is also connected to the North Sea pipeline, which supplies other European countries, such as Belgium, France and Germany. And the gas is expected to boost energy supplies there, too, eventually. Energy. It's central to our way of life and the driving force behind many of the 20th century's greatest advances. But with energy use expected to double by 2050, what transformations lie ahead? Shell uses scenarios to explore the future. These are not mechanical predictions. They recognize that people hold beliefs and make choices that lead down different paths. We at Shell believe the world will take one of two possible routes. The first, a scenario we call scramble. In a scramble world, events outpace actions. The status quo is preserved, and nations scramble to obtain energy for themselves, leading to a volatile world and ever higher prices. The alternative, a scenario called blueprints, is less painful. Actions outpace events. The Blueprints scenario sees the emergence of numerous coalitions to tackle the challenges of development. Cross-border cooperation starts the wheels of innovation to take on the challenges of economic development, energy security and environmental pollution. Shell traditionally uses scenarios to prepare for the future without expressing a preference for one over another. But faced with the need to manage climate risk for our investors and grandchildren, we at Shell believe that the Blueprint outcome provides the best hope for a sustainable future. Blueprints will not be easy, but it offers the best chance to reach a sustainable energy future unscathed. We should explore this route with the same ingenuity and persistence that put humans on the moon.
all the way from a Jurassic beak to a human mouth. Energy remains constant. It's just a question of how we choose to harness it. Shell, a journey in energy. <laughs>